The origin of the dirty war can be traced back to the rise of Juan Perón, Argentina's extremely popular president during the 1940s to the 1950s, and his politics of Peronism, a unique, all-inclusive nationalist ideology. Peronism gained broad support from the common people, workers and peasants, as well as from the political left, moderates and even the far right. However, in 1955, President Perón was deposed in a military coup. Argentina then came under military rule, and Peronism and Peronist parties were banned. By the late 1960s, the remaining Peronist movements had given way to various radical and communist armed groups that had sprung up as a result of Fidel Castro's communist victory in Cuba and the subsequent spread of Marxist ideology across Latin America. In the early 1970s, Argentinian insurgents carried out attacks against civilian and military targets. Rebel actions included assassinations, summary killings, abductions, bombings, and armed robberies. Partly because of the increasing civil unrest as well as an ailing economy, the military government lifted the ban on Peronism. Then in elections held in May 1973, a left-wing Peronist political party came to power. The new government freed political prisoners and enacted pro-leftist laws. The resurgent labor union stage job actions causing many businesses to close down. Many foreign investors left the country after receiving threats on their lives, businesses, and properties. With a ban on his return lifted, ex-president Perón returned to Argentina in June 1973. But what should have been cause for celebration instead generated a fatal split in Peronism. Some 2 million Peronist supporters welcomed Perón's arrival at the airport. Then when commotion broke out, Perón's armed right-wing supporters fired on left-wing Peronists in the crowd, killing 13 people and wounding over 300 others. The next month, the left-wing Peronist government stepped down, giving way to Perón to take up the presidency, since he had won the presidential election held a few months earlier. President Perón's vice president was Isabel Perón, his wife, who won the vice presidential race. President Perón was supported by a broad coalition and a massive populist base that included leftist elements. However, he cast his lot with his right-wing supporters and formed a government comprising the bureaucratic elite as well as some moderates. By May 1974, President Perón had purged his government and political party of left-leaning politicians. His left-wing supporters at the lower echelons had been alienated as well. But already in failing health at age 78, President Perón's final term in office lasted only 10 months as he passed away on June 1, 1974. Isabel Perón, the vice president, succeeded as Argentina's new president. However, Isabel's political inexperience manifested as she was incapable of confronting the country's many problems. High-ranking government and military leaders interfered constantly in major government policy decisions, and Isabel was relegated to a figurehead president. The growing influence of the military in politics plunged the country deeper into the dirty war, which had actually begun near the end of Juan Perón's presidency. Extremist right-wing politicians close to Juan Perón had organized the Argentine Anti-Communist Alliance, or AAA, a clandestine state-run death squad that initially targeted union leaders but expanded its operations to include all leftist elements, as well as political dissidents. Argentinian communists also militarized, terrorizing private businesses with bombings, arsons, and armed robberies, and kidnapping or killing businessmen, managers, and executives. The insurgents also attacked police stations and army outposts, causing hundreds of military and police casualties. In 1975, communist rebels gained a third section of Tucuman province in the northwest region, the government issued the so-called Annihilation Decrees, which authorized the military to crush the insurgency. The country was reconfigured into military zones, greatly reducing the civilian government's authority. In March 1976, high-ranking military officers deposed Isabel Perón. The military stated reason for the coup was to prevent the communist takeover of the country. Thereafter, a military junta came to power. The national legislature was abolished while the judicial courts were restructured to suit the new militarized system. The academe and intelligentsia were suppressed as were labor and people's assemblies. 
the military government imposed harsh measures to stamp out communist and leftist elements. Also targeted by the military were opposition politicians, journalists, writers, labor and student leaders, including their supporters and sympathizers. Military authorities operated with impunity, arbitrarily subjecting their suspected enemies to arrests, interrogations, tortures, and executions. One notorious method of execution was the death flight, where prisoners were drugged, stripped naked, and held down with weights on their feet, and then boarded onto a plane and later thrown into the Atlantic Ocean. Since death flights and other forms of executions made certain that the bodies would not be found, the victims were said to have disappeared striking great fear on the people. Another atrocity was allowing captured pregnant women to give birth and then killing them, with their babies given to the care of and adopted by military or right-leaning couples. The military and AAA death squads carried out these operations clandestinely during the Dirty War. The military government's anti-insurgency campaign was so forceful, sustained, and effective that by 1977, leftist and communist groups had practically ceased to exist. Hundreds of rebels who had escaped to nearby countries of Brazil, Uruguay, Paraguay, Bolivia, and Chile were arrested and returned to Argentina. The United States provided technical assistance to the integrated intelligence network of these countries within the scope of its larger struggle against communism in the Cold War. Argentina's government continued its draconian rule even after it had stamped out the insurgency. The dirty war cost some 9,000 confirmed and up to 30,000 unconfirmed victims from murders and forced disappearances. However, by 1982, the military's anti-insurgency campaign, which had initially found broad public support, was being criticized by the population because of rampant government corruption and the floundering economy. Seeking to revitalize its flagging image, the military government launched an invasion of the British-controlled Falkland Islands in an attempt to stir up nationalist sentiments and regain public support. Argentinian forces briefly gained control of the islands. However, a British naval task force soon arrived and recaptured the Falkland Islands, driving away and inflicting heavy casualties on the Argentinian forces. Consequently, Argentina's military government collapsed, ending the country's militarized climate. Argentina then began to transition to civilian rule under a democratic system. After the country held general elections in 1983, the new government opened a commission to investigate the crimes committed during the Dirty War. Subsequently, a number of perpetrators were brought to trial and convicted. However, some military units broke out in rebellion to protest the convictions, forcing the government to pass new laws that reduced the military's culpability during the Dirty War. In 1989, a broad amnesty was given to all persons who had been involved, indicted, and even convicted of crimes during the Dirty War. In June 2005, Argentina's Supreme Court overturned the amnesty laws, allowing the reopening of criminal lawsuits for dirty war crimes. The fates of many persons killed and disappeared, as well as infants taken from their murdered mothers, remain unsolved and are subject to ongoing investigations.